praise the lord and good morning how is everybody today i want to believe that you are all well and i want to just take a moment and welcome all of you um let me be sure that i can see you and that you are here thank you so much thank you god bless you and for all of you that have already joined just take a moment and share this uh video with somebody uh, you never know who might be helped. Uh, this program has been a blessing to many people. So I ask you to just take a moment and just share uh, this uh, sermon, this broadcast with a friend. So we hit the road. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stanley Caricho, for being here. And uh, Carol, Justin, and there are seven other people who are watching with you. Please host watch parties uh, if you can. Just go to your timeline and uh, host a watch party. And I want to welcome Eunice, Imbuka, uh, Feli, Mamake. God bless you so much. Uh, I welcome Ali Ali, Bishop's friend. Welcome, welcome Ali Ali. Um, Mbote, Daniel, it's always a pleasure to see you. Mbote, Nancy Mitalo, welcome. And uh, Aida, Aida, welcome. And uh, who else? Let me see. There is Beatrice Karaoke. Beatrice all the way from Nyeri. God bless you. Shiro, the Lord bless you so much. Talash Kabare. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, Bote, you're saying you're from uh, Deliverance Church Matasia with Reverend Charles Gadungu. God bless you. Lydia and Joseph Karaoke and people who are watching with you. Uh, thank you. Please just do a host party for those of you know how to do it. Just go ahead and host a, 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 a party so that other people can watch this with you. Don't watch it alone. You know, when you do a host party, what happens is it appears on your timeline and other people now can join your party. This is a party where we are feasting on the word of the Lord. So don't never watch alone because what I have discovered is uh, uh, for every word that goes out, there is somebody, there is somebody who receives that word and blesses them. So just share, share, sharing is one way. And of course, hosting a watch party is another. Uh, Lucy Kamau, God bless you so much. And I uh, also want to take this moment to welcome all those who are watching on one accord. Thank you so much, Steve Biko, for being behind the machines there at the one accord. The Lord bless you. Joseph Karaoke, all of you. Lona Muteti, thank you so much. And uh, Jane Degwa, I appreciate you. Esther, Esther Mwaora, God bless you. Jibena, I was wondering where you are. Karibu sana. Wehoke Mwadhani, thank you all the way from Seattle. Uh, Miriam Jerry, Pastor Dixon Thuo, thank you. Bishop's man, that's what I hear you being called. Jane Wamboi, God bless you. Pastor Anne Karicho, the Lord bless you so much. Lona Makungu, how are you Lona? It's good to see you. And uh, Dorothy, or Pastor Ayub Kayo, man of God, we honor you. Thank you. And uh, Nemo Ann. Uh, thank you, Susan Modoni, Mary Wanjohi, Mary Wanjohi, thank you, oh my goodness, you so many of you, so let me take a, let me just say all of you are welcome, uh, whether I have mentioned you or I have not mentioned you, remember in heaven your name is registered, God knows you, he understands your situation and he has a word for you, so if you'll allow me, I'll just go straight ahead and share uh, what God has put in my heart. And uh, before I also do that, I want to bring you the greetings of the bishop, uh, the, our prophet, our father, our spiritual leader, uh, and the host of this broadcast who brings us uh, the word every morning. And, uh, you know, it is a great sacrifice. I think about it and I always think it's such a great sacrifice for him, you know, that he committed himself every day, Monday to Saturday, to be coming and bringing the word. It's not easy. Trust me. It's not even easy, you know, praying about it, preparing for it, waking up early and getting ready every day. It's now more than an year since he began this and we thank God for Bishop Mark and uh, ju we just continue to also pray for him that the grace of God will be upon him. So receive his greetings this morning and uh, you know again committed in something that he could not be here but uh, he's well. So yesterday uh, I was also here sharing the word of the Lord 
and we were looking at how uh, you know God's thoughts are not our thoughts and uh, you know his ways are not his our ways and we were reading from Isaiah 55 from verse 8 to 9 which says that for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord and as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts uh, than your thoughts. Father, we thank you for your word this morning and we open up our spirit that you may speak to us. Holy Spirit, this is your meeting. These are your people. I am your servant. I, I pray that as I open my mouth to speak, Lord, you'll be speaking to us. Have your way in Jesus name. Amen. So yesterday I, I dealt a little bit about um, how our ways, you know, are not God's ways. Uh, and how it is important for us uh, to know God's ways. And we borrowed from what Moses said, or, or rather from Psalms 103.7 that says that God made his ways known to Moses. God made his ways known to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. So the people of Israel knew the deeds of God. Moses knew the ways of God. And we, we looked at how that is very different, that you can know somebody for their deeds and not even know them, not know anything about them, what are their thoughts, what are their minds, and all that. And we said, you know, you are better off knowing God's ways, knowing what is God thinking, what is the big picture that God holds about this situation. And that is why God could work with Moses, because Moses understood God. And uh, so we agreed. Even our prayer will be that God reveal to me your ways. And But we also agreed that because our minds are so small and, and it is said by scientists that we use a very small percentage of our brains. I don't know what is the percentage, but they say it's very small. But we, we said that even if we were to use 100% of our brains, we still would not understand fully the ways of God. But by and by, it is important that we are led by God. And that was actually the conclusion yesterday where we said before you make any decision, normally people will say before you make any major decision, but I say before you make any decision, you seek the Lord. Ask the Lord, what are you thinking about this situation? Do I move this way? Do I partner with this person for business? Even ministry, do I partner with this person? Do I, you know, like for us preachers, you know, you are invited to go and preach. You know, previously for me, if you invited me to come, I'll say yes. You know, as long as the calendar is clear, Bishop has given me the green light, I will come. But you know, you, you get to a point where you realize, I mean, you're not called to go everywhere. You 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 want to go where God is is leading you and, and, and gives you a message, you know, for those people. So even in such moments, you got an invitation, you need to just step back a little bit and ask the Lord, do I go, don't I go? <laughs> you know, and we have many examples of people in the Bible, kings who, who, who followed God's way, they succeeded, and others who decided, you know, I will take matters in my hands. And we also know Saul is one of them. So we said any decision, don't go by what makes sense because the things of God, the ways of, of God, his thoughts, they don't make sense. They don't. You know, if we were to use our five common senses, they don't make sense. They make every spiritual sense, but they don't make sense. Uh, sense if we were to use our common sense. So don't go with what makes sense. Don't go with what uh, your parents told you or what they said. Don't go with what you were taught in school. You might have gone and even gotten your undergraduate, gotten your master's, gotten your PhD and all those things are good. But even with that education, you still need to allow God to step in and ask him, what are you thinking? Don't go by what you hear. You know, we, we, right now we are in a society where there is so much, 
uh, there are so many voices that speak to us, media being one of them. So we, we don't go with what the media says, but we concluded that, you know, we will create room for God uh, in our lives. So that is where we stopped at yesterday, just a short recap, so that for you who are not able to be here yesterday, uh, we can now flow together. But remember, the message is still there on Bishop Mark's wall. So you can always go back and look at it. So today, for the time that we have, I thought of looking, at uh, just examples of ways that God is uh, different from us or God's ways are different from us. There are many areas we can look at and see how he has operated in the past and, uh, you know, even now how he operates. And, and seriously and surely we will see there is such a difference. And I wanted to look at God's uh, timing, the issue of timing. Timing for everything. Timing for everything. Because uh, God has a mind about timing of things in our lives. Uh, and, and, and you know what? We also have a, a, our own time. So there is God's time and there is man's time. And it is for you and I to decide which time do I want to move with. Do I want to move with God's time, which is the best, which is the perfect timing? Or do I want to move with my own time jesus is a perfect example of um a man who, while here on earth who lived with god's time if you see in uh, john john uh, 17 and 4 jesus himself says i glorified you he's talking to god and he says i glorified you on the earth having accomplished the work which you have given me to do and remember his ministry began when he was 30 years and he worked for only three years. I was going to say three short years, you know, because again, to man, they look like they were short, three years. But if you read John 17, he says, I have accomplished in those three years, I have accomplished, uh, you know, the work that you gave me to do. And, you know, thinking about, if you just think about Jesus, you'd wonder why it had to take him 30 years for his ministry to begin. You know, you'd wonder, so why didn't it begin when he was 20, when he was 25, when he was 15? I mean, we have seen, uh, you know, people, men called of God at very young ages. You know, we have a very young evangelist also here in Kenya. So, and I think he's barely 15. I don't know if he's 13. So we know God can call at such an age, but you'd wonder why it took, you know, Jesus 30 years, you know, for God to start now using him or for him to start doing the work that he was uh, called. But it is basically because he was moving with God's time. That was the appointed time. Even, and I'll mention later, even his coming on earth was at the appointed time. So there is God's time and there is also man's time. Let us live with the awareness that life is very short, very short. And one day we will have to give an account of the things that we did while we are here on earth. You know, when you're alive, you're here, it looks like we are here for eternity. I mean, I've woken up today and all is well. I'll sleep, I'll wake up in the morning. And it looks like, you know, we are here. But, let, but if we can live with that um, awareness that life is very brief, very brief. I mean, even if you are to live to be 100 years compared to eternity, it is so brief. So what is it you are doing here, you know, in this short time that we have? I was reading uh, of this great man that we know, the late uh, Bill Graham, and it is said that one time uh, he was just being interviewed and he was asked, uh, what is it that surprised him the most about life? You know, or what is it about life that sometimes, you know, made him just ponder and wonder about life? And he said it is the, 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 uh, how brief life is. For him, that was what used to surprise him, how brief life is. So let's be aware of that. Like we have a brief time and we are here to do what God has called us to do. So we are saying, we are talking about God's timing and we need to remember, I'll just mention a few points uh, that God has a timetable for everything that happens in your life, in my life, here on earth. He has the timetable. 
from even before the foundations of the earth he you know before he ever laid the foundations to now to even later he has the timetable ecclesiastes 3 1 a verse we know very well i was reading from the nab version and it says there is an appointed time for everything and there is a right time for every activity under heaven appointed so it is the appointed time and the bible continues to say that appointed time is the right time appointed time is the right time so in everything you're doing is it the appointed time because if it is the appointed time then it is the right time to be doing that thing ecclesiastes 3 1 and uh pastor rick uh rick warren you know you know him the the author of the um, the, the purpose driven life he he actually quotes and maybe some of you hear me say this a lot uh when i'm here but he says that the right time appears in the bible i think he has said 96 times there are people who are very good in doing these uh, studies and research and he says the right time at the appointed time you know the right time it has appeared in the bible 96 times god has the right time put that in your mind that god has the right time for everything and that's why i said earlier it's not just about the small the major decisions of our lives but also the small the small decisions and the small activities and the big activities he has the right time for everything god's timing is what we can call like a mystery you know it's like a mystery because to us we don't have knowledge you know of it of what is god planning and which is this appointed time you know but we have not been called to know <laughs> we have not been called to know the time trust me we have not jesus said it very clearly you know when he was also talking about uh the, the 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 he's coming back and you know what would happen and all that in acts 1 and 7 reading from the message uh bible he's jesus said himself you don't get to know the time you know people were asking him so master when will when when is this time you are telling us when all these things when is the when is it you remember when and he was telling them even him he doesn't know even the angels don't know but i like from uh, you know from the message uh, bible that was saying that where he said you don't get to know the time timing is the father's business i like that the timing of things is the father's business because god causes things to happen at exactly the right time and your job is not to figure out when is that time do you know there are people who um have consumed their time and their efforts to try and pin down to when so when is christ coming and they'll take you know uh they'll, they'll study the bible and, and 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 all the signs that jesus gave and all that doing all those calculations to 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 try and pin down so this is the time but he's saying it is not your business to know the time you know that christ is coming back when he's coming you don't know and you don't need to know but what you need to do is to be prepared for his coming and you need even in the issues of your life it is not for you to know so when will i get married it is not for you to know so when is this corona going to end it has taken too long but now you know when is it going to end or whatever else that is happening so when will i get a baby when will i when will i when it is not in your in your domain if i may put it it is not in your domain to know when but it is for you not you, you know for you it is to know that it will happen this issue is in god's hand is in god's uh, hands in god's control in god's timetable and at the appointed time at the right time it will happen in the name of jesus christ and with that knowledge you will not give up on god you know you will not give up on god um the bible is very clear that it is not for us you know to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own authority there are things that are in the authority of god we, um, it's called the space of god there are things that belong to that to his space and time is one seasons is one just as life and death are in his space 
And the problem is when we try to get in that space so that we can know. And that is why he says in uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. And times and seasons are some of those secrets. There are many secrets, mysteries, you know, paradoxes. They are in God's space. And he has chosen not to reveal. So don't, you will frustrate yourself with a prayer of when, when, when you want to know. You know, put your request, let it be known to the Lord. He will do it at the appointed time. Isaiah 49 and verse 8. Isaiah 49 and verse 8. I read all kinds of versions. This is the NCV version. And it says, at the right time. I will answer your prayers. At the right time, I will answer your prayers. On Wednesdays when we pray, on Wednesdays at 5 p.m., tomorrow join me at 5 p.m., we pray. And I tell people, mine is to pray. You know, that is my domain. That is my space. God, God is, it's not in, for God to pray. That is my domain. That is it in my hands. To pray. Now, the answering is not in my domain in terms of how it is answered, when it is answered. That is not in my domain. That is in the space of God. And that is why Isaiah 49 8, he says it very clearly at, that, at the right time, I will answer your prayers. I was. Um, I was, I, was, I, was, I was very blessed with a message I was listening sometime in the course of the week where the preacher was saying, when you pray and you don't see an answer to your prayer, you know, that time when you are praying and you're not seeing an answer to your prayer, it simply means that it is not yet time for the answer. I said, hey, it is not, that's all it means because if it was the time, for the answer, God would deliver the answer. But he simply said, it is not the time. So for you, it is to stay in faith, knowing at the right time, it will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that in the fullness of time, Christ came. That is in Galatians 4.4. Galatians 4.4, which says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. When? When the fullness of time had come, Jesus, God sent forth his son. The, 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 the time that Jesus was born was the appointed time by God. Okay, He could not have come earlier. He would not have come later. That was the right time. On Saturday, I was speaking uh, in a conference of uh, uh, our good friends, Bishop Peter and Faith Ndongo, or OFC Church on Thika Road, and they had their Daughters of Faith conference, and I was speaking on Saturday, and uh, the theme was from the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. And, you know, I, I, when I was looking at that whole story, you, you remember how, what the story says, that when Elijah came to the gate of the city, the widow was there gathering some sticks and also there is that there is the widow of nine you've heard about the widow of nine her son, she was a widow and then her son dies and so jesus somewhere in luke so jesus, so they are going to bury her son so they are, they are the men who are carrying the coffin actually they were saying it's an open coffin so they are carrying to go and bury him you know like outside the the city and the bible says the widow of nine n-a-i-n -N, nine so the Bible says that when, they, when Jesus came at the gate of the city, they were coming out. So he saw them and he's wondering, where are you going? What is happening? And he sees their mourning. The, he sees the woman. He has compassion on her. And he says he touched the, the coffin, told the boy, come, rise up. And then he gave, the boy woke up, started speaking. And the Bible says Jesus gave the mother, the son. It's a beautiful story. You know, those two stories, I was looking at them and I was asking, is it coincidence? You know the way people talk about coincidences. There are no coincidences in the kingdom of God. There are no coincidences with God. He has a timetable for everything. What we see as a coincidence. So these widows, both of them are widows. You know, how is it that they were just there 
at the gate of the city just when Elijah is coming in, just when Jesus is coming in for their miracles to happen. I'm here to let you know at the right time, at the appointed time, your miracle shall come in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep walking in this life with expectation that your day can be today. Your day, your hour, your time, your minute, your second can be now. We do not know. And that is why for me, I am not so keen with those messages of you're being blessed now, now, now. I mean, okay, unless God has revealed to me to tell you it is now, I don't know. But what I know is that God will bless you. What I know is that God will answer your prayer because he promises to answer our prayers. You know, what I can guarantee you is victory in that situation. When will it happen? Timing is in God's hands. You know, I can tell you for sure that you will receive your healing because I am saying it convicted by the word of God where he says, you know, we by the strength of Jesus Christ, we are healed. But when will it happen? I don't know. But God knows because uh, there is also a whole message about divine delays. There can be a reason why God would take a year to heal you. There would be a reason why God would take... Uh, 10 years to give you a child. There would be a reason why God would make me stay for 40 years before I get married. There was purpose in the waiting. There was purpose in that delay. It is actually delay for men, but for God it's not a delay. That's why I like to call it a divine delay because it has purpose in it. So God has a timetable for everything, for everything in our lives. He has a, 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 a timetable and when you understand that, then even prayer, you can continue to pray. You will not give up in your prayer. You will not leave church. You will not backslide because you waited on God and you gave up because you know that at the right time, at the appointed time, it shall happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen and amen? That situation that you are going through, be guaranteed of this thing, that at the appointed time, it will happen. The other day I was uh, looking and, and I was thinking, you know, everything you think about, and I was looking at my president, you know, I love my president, I pray for him, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, you know, not because everything he does or says is good and perfect, because he's the appointed He's the appointed man for this nation. So I honor him and I love him and I pray for him. You know, and many times I look at him and I'm always thinking, you know, he had to be born and it is the same for anyway, every other leader, not just him. But I always think he had to be born at the time he was born so that at a point, at a certain point, he could be the president of this nation. You know, everything happens according to God's plan and purpose. Let me tell you. So even times, let me speak to a, a lady, uh, you know, you are married and you have been waiting for the fruit of the womb, a child, and now it is five years, it is seven years, it is 10 years, for some maybe it's even 15 years. And many times you can look and wonder, Lord, you know, why is it taking so long? Why is it taking so long? Again, that's a question we can ask, ask God, why? Why? You know, he knows why. But you know, you can be asking those kind of questions. But for me, I always look and I say, you know what? Because you do not know the child that God is going to give you, what is his destiny? What will be his purpose? So he has to be born at the right time. And probably it is not yet the right time. So that when you be 20 or when you be 50, you know, there'll be elections in the nation and you'll be the president or you, there'll be a takeoff, there'll be a change of leadership in Deliverance Church International and my son will be taking over. Who knows? Who knows? God's timing is the perfect timing and he has a timetable for everything. So for me, you know, with that knowledge, what it does, then it gives you a peace. It causes you to be at peace. And to know, you, we cannot manipulate God. If you try to manipulate single ladies, if you are listening to me, single men that may be listening to me, don't work it out for yourself. Don't manipulate God. It, we manipulate him without knowing we are manipulating him. You know, don't try to take shortcuts. You stay there. You wait. Who knows? If I had taken some shortcuts, if I had left church, Ho oh, oh, ho, I would not be here. I would not be here. But I stayed knowing it shall come to pass. Because God had not told me that I will not get married. 
You know, if you had told me I would not get married, then I would have stayed knowing, okay, okay, and served him with gladness. But since he had not told me that, I still held on. But one day, one day, I'll get married. There was a reason I had to wait for 40 years. What am I saying? God's timetable. God has a timetable for everything here on earth. And it is for us to release ourselves and to accept and, and to rest and to let God do it in his time because his time is perfect. I'll give just one more point and then end it there because there are many. We cannot even finish everything today. But let me allow me to just share one more point still along about God's time. God is never in a hurry. Okay. He's never in a hurry. He's never late. He's always on time. He's never in a hurry. He's never late. He's always on time. <laughs> you know, uh, there are many situations sometimes that we go through in our lives uh, on this whole issue of timing of things and we can get very frustrated. You know, can be so full of questions. So why is it taking long and all that? And uh, 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 thinking about this point, again, I always think uh, the story of Mother and Mary, you know, and they are looking at Jesus and they are wondering, surely now, why now you are coming now, <laughs> you know, uh, when our brother is dead, surely, you know, you'd have come earlier. God is never in a hurry. He's never late. He comes on time. The time Jesus came to this home was the right time. And there was a reason. And he had already spoken about that. And he had said, this is for the glory of God. And surely they saw the glory of God. You know, but we can get that frustrated with that feeling of God is delaying, you know, because we don't have the full details of the picture. And we know we, we, we have so many stories of people in the Bible and even in our own times today who, if you look at their situation, may look like you know, God delayed. So where was God? Where was God when Joseph was being put in the pit? He has given him the, the dream. He has laid out the vision that he has for him. So where, where are you? Where are God? Where, so where was God, you know, when he was in the pit, when he was in the prison? He, he's given Abraham a promise. So why is it taking so long, surely? If you give a promise, you honor the promise. So we, we have those examples who you may look, maybe when it is you, we don't even have to go to the Bible. Maybe we can look at you and see like uh, God is late. You know, my girl, you, be, you could be looking and thinking, you look at your birth certificate and you're thinking, surely I'm now clocking 45. Hey, isn't God late? He's never late. He's always on time. And let me tell you sometimes, God's timing, sometimes God's timing, which is the right time, which is his own time, sometimes can be, you know, not a convenient time for us. But the question goes back. I began by saying, will you go with God's time or will you go with, uh, with man's time, which is your time? God created time. Remember, he's never late. He's never in a hurry. He's the creator of time. Remember that he's the creator of time. So that means he's its, he is its master, okay? He is timeless. He's not bound by time, you know? His time is perfect. He's never late. And remember, in that period when it looks like he's late, there is something that he's working out. He's not, uh, uh, you know, seeking, uh, doing some research <laughs> of what do I need to do about this situation. Hey! You know, this COVID has taken long. It's how many months? Six. Is it six or seven? What do we do? What do we no, that God is not in that situation. Because for us, it could be looking like this thing is dragging and dragging. And we are thinking even from God's end, it's dragging as he seeks a solution. No. Even in during this season, in those the months, it is March to now. The months that it is. What looks like a delay in bringing cure and dealing with these things, God is not sleeping. He's not taking a vacation. He's still working. And, 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 and God willing and God allowing, there is a lot we can speak about that. I, like I said, the purpose of delay. 
and how God works in delays. He's always at work. So always be assured of this thing that he's working for you. He's working for your family. He's working in the name of Jesus. Ecclesiastes 3 and, 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 and 11, he says he has made everything beautiful in his time. He has made everything beautiful in its time, which means that time God has to wait until the right time uh, because then the thing becomes beautiful. If it was to come before or even later, it will not be beautiful. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Uh, 2 Peter 3 and 8, I'm now just coming, kind of making a conclusion for today. 2 Peter 3 and 8, the Bible says, never forget this, NIV, never forget this. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. So when we think that he's in a hurry or he has delayed and all that, for the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Let me also read for you Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2.3. The Bible also says, uh, let me read for that. My, my laptop just decided to go off. <laughs> Habakkuk 2 and 3. Let's see what the Bible says. Habakkuk. Where is Habakkuk? Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2, okay, let me see, 2 and 3, the Bible says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the, at the end it will speak, and it will not delay, it, do, it will not delay, let me read that again, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. I was reading from NIV. So there are different versions to that. It will not, let me see what 3 says. And it will not prove false. There are many versions you can read. It will not delay at the appointed time. So let us stop uh, maybe having this idea or this mentality that God is late. God is delaying. He's not delaying. He's not delaying anything. He's working out everything for your good. And I pray that today you'll be encouraged by that message. You know, to know that everything in our lives is in the hands of the Lord. Just know that, that he has the timetable for your life. He has the timetable for your life. He is never in a hurry. He is never late. He comes at the right time. So whatever it is that you are waiting for the Lord to perform, let me tell you, in his time, he will perform it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on salvation. These are the paradoxes. We call them paradoxes yesterday. Paradoxes of the kingdom of God. And they are paradoxes. They are mysteries. Because the way we think is not the way our God thinks. And remember what I told you yesterday. That we don't want a God who is like us. Surely. We don't, I don't want a God who is like me. I don't want a God who thinks like me. I don't want a God who acts like me. I don't want a God who operates like me. Even with leadership, we don't want leaders who are like us. You know, we need leaders of higher, you know, higher visions, higher dreams, higher thinking capacities. So it is the same with our God. And that is the reason we worship him. If he was like man, there would be no need to worship him. But now because he is God, which means he has his ways are higher than us then that is the reason we are able to worship him so it is a good thing for god not to be like us it is a good thing for god's ways not to be our ways but remember let your endeavor and let your effort be that god i want to walk in your time i want to walk with you with you lord in whatever i am doing Father, I want to walk with you and I want to understand your ways. And he reveals because as we seek him and seek him with all our heart, he has promised that he will be found if we seek him with our whole heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you been blessed? <laughs> Have you been blessed? I know, of course, it's one of those messages where 
you know, the, I, and I know because I'm also like you, we want the messages of you will be blessed, you'll be blessed now, you'll be blessed now, now, your miracle is coming now, receive it, it is now. Okay, amen, <laughs> amen, amen. Uh, let's leave matters in the Lord's hands and let's know that uh, it will not delay. At the end of the time, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Alice Njoki, thank you for being here. And Veronica Mogendi and Lea Ngena. Lea, it's good to see you, Seth Skyway. Um, Wamboy Alice and Modoni Mongai, God bless you so much. Florence Njeroge, thank you. Lydia, Lucy Mushiri and uh, Lea Ngena, God bless you so much. Evelyn Mwenda, thank you so much also for being here. Uh, Rose Moraithi, thank you. And also thank you for saying that you have been encouraged. Uh, Kara Chumba, yes, God's timing is perfect. So you will get married at the perfect time. You Even the business idea, maybe you've been praying for a business idea and nothing is coming to your mind. Let me tell you, it's just again, like I said, if there is no answer, it's just not the right time. God, at the right time, uh, God will make it happen. So God's timing is perfect. You want a baby at the perfect time, it will happen. You want a wife at the perfect time, it is going to happen. Everything. So Something in your ministry you want to happen at the perfect time, God's time, it's going to happen. So let's just keep holding on the Lord. Thy roge chango, yet God comes at the right time. He's never late. At you, hey, I have come. What's happening? What's happening here? <laughs> You know, what's going on? I'm so sorry. You know that we sometimes also are always late for things and we are running. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. I, it's never so with God. He just comes in at the right time. And I love my God uh, just thinking about that. So I think we call it a day for now. If you're not born again, if you have not surrendered your life to the Lord, so it means you're living by your own time. You're doing things by your own time. You're doing things by your own thoughts. That's not an interesting life. You will not be fulfilled. You will not find success if you move with your own ways. You need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. That is what salvation is about. And so I want to take a moment and just lead you in a prayer where you'll open up your heart and receive Christ into your life. So by faith, sincerely, from the bottom of your heart, just now open, this, uh, open your mouth and repeat these words after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have heard your word. And today, I surrender my life to you. I desire that you lead me and that you guide me, that I walk in your ways. And so now I surrender my life to you. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And right now, I accept you into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all it means. And now desire to walk with the Lord, get into a church that preaches the word of the Lord so that you can learn the ways of the Lord. They have been revealed in the Bible. So look for some, a pastor. There are many. Again, pray, make a prayer and ask the Lord to lead you to a pastor, to a church where you can grow. For the rest of us, uh, let's pray and just seek the Lord's ways and just surrender that issue that you have been holding on and just say, it has to happen now. Why is it not happening? Just surrender. That is the, you know, uh, uh, later on when I'll come, there'll be issues I'll be talking about how, so what do you do in those moments of waiting? And one of the things you can do is just to surrender. So right now, let's make a prayer of just surrendering that issue to the Lord and saying, you know what, Lord, at the perfect time, in your time, it shall happen. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to pray for my viewers this morning. I want to pray for myself. We have many needs in our lives. We have made prayer requests to you, Lord, of the things that we desire and we have stood by your word, oh God. And this morning, Father, we surrender everything in our lives, our prayers, our desires. We surrender them to you, Lord, standing on your word that you make things beautiful in your time, oh God, at the right time. You make them beautiful and Lord, right now we surrender and say, Father, do it at your time for your glory. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord bless you so much. Hold on. Don't give up. Keep trusting the Lord. Keep holding on his promises. He's faithful and he will do it at his time. Amen. So now I want us now, don't just go. Don't go. Let's uh, connect with the altar. Uh, the word that you have received today, I want you to just connect with that word. And the way you connect with that is where you give your offering. Uh, and let your offering speak for you. You want your offering to speak for you. Name your offering. What do you want the Lord to do for you? So I want you to do that. Our pay bill number 
is 954416. 95, it's right there. 954416. And the account is Super Life. The account is Super Life. So 954416. And the account is Super Life. And as you give, may it come back to you a hundredfold in jesus name god bless you have a super super day for those that came in later greetings and love from bishop mark he is well uh, attending to other businesses and responsibilities that he has but he has passed his greetings to you we look forward to seeing you tomorrow 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 wednesday at 9 a.m join us again join me at 5 p.m as we pray and call on the name of the lord god bless you amen